Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today guys we are going to be analyzing the company Buckle and the reason why we're doing this is because they actually have earnings today guys Friday before open as you guys can see right here. So let's actually analyze this company to see if maybe at the current share price we would like to buy it. Now what it looks like I honestly this is the first time I've ever seen this company or at least the first time I've ever been on their website. It looks like they sell clothes. They're an apparels company so uh, rather interesting rather interesting so with that said let's get started with this analysis so then of course with the dividend summary guys this dividend yield is well actually somewhat good right 4.21 percent which ends up being 35 cents per share for an annual payout of a dollar and 40 cents payout ratio is 26.61 we're gonna take a look at this in regards to the cash flow in just one second but this is a good starting point that is fairly fairly good a five-year CAGR of 6.65 percent with zero consecutive years so let's actually see what the zero consecutive years is about by coming over here to the dividend history and uh on Unfortunately, well, I do not like this at all because this is not consistent. You can see that occasionally that they do have a really good, I guess, outlier year where like, for example, in 2021 in December, they gave out guys a $5.65 per share dividend, which is just absolutely insane, right? And you can see some years they did cut it over here in 2020 because of probably covid of course and well yeah it's just been i don't i don't necessarily know where to put this right because they kept it roughly around like the 25 20 cent mark and then they give out this massive dividend out of nowhere similar to that of costco but i do not think it's a special dividend in this case because seeking alpha is not taking it as a special dividend making the dividend growth year at zero percent usually special dividends are not counted as part of the dividend growth so even after they cut it and i'm putting that in air quotes even after they cut it the dividend growth still remains the same so the fact that it's at zero this may be either a mistake from seeking alpha or the fact that that's not a special dividend which is you know, kind of concerning because this is just all over the place ex dividend date guys pass as of july 14th payout date was july 29th and they pay their dividends quarterly let's come over here now to the calculator we got the ticker symbol of bke per buckle market cap of 1.7 billion dollars with a pe of look at this 6.59 that's actually not too shabby because with the current share price of $33.71, guys, this might actually be a pretty good buy in accordance to their earnings. That's honestly fairly good. So far, this company is kind of impressing me, except for that dividend, obviously. But so far, just from these two things, just from the PE, it's not looking too bad. And if we actually take a look at their one-year graph, we can see that they are down to almost 11%. Year-to-date, it is 18.81% and the 52 week range they're definitely more closer to the 52 week low of 26 dollars and 50 cents so that's actually fairly interesting about what's happening with these share prices might not be a bad buyer today guys now taking a look at this dividend of a dollar and 40 cents this comes out to be 68.88 million dollars being paid on dividends every single year of course in accordance to their shares outstanding Looking at their five-year average free cash flow and then subtracting the $68.88 million, they're still left with $99.26 million. And looking at last year's free cash flow, they're still left with $223.8 million. So that actually comes out to be, guys, a payout ratio of 23.53% for last year's free cash flow and almost 41% for the five-year average. So in both scenarios, they're still showing a pretty strong su sustainability when it comes to this dividend, which is really, really good. Obviously, the five-year average is a little is higher, but it's still way below my 60% threshold for putting up warning signs. All right, guys, now let's come over here and take a look at some fundamentals, starting, of course, with the net income, as always. We got five years ago of $89.7 million to one year ago of $254.8 million. Guys, that is a massive increase of 184%. And if we actually take a look at this graph, well, this graph actually isn't looking too shabby, believe it or not. Now, we do see an increase, a consistent increase at that from five to two years ago, even during COVID, guys, a nice consistent increase. You can see 89.7, 95.6, 104.4, 130.1, and then a massive outlier as of one year ago. So what causes outlier one year ago? Probably two things, guys. 
pent up demand when it came to just buying stuff as well as just the overall inflation situation that has been currently happening right obviously last year inflation wasn't at 8.5 percent but it was still significantly higher than the two and a half percent or the two percent that the fed uh, likes to put in right so i think those two things together increased it to 254.8 million dollars and for that reason this makes it an outlier now will they continue this well the answer to that is actually maybe because again inflation has gone higher and inflation does tend to push profits up so if inflation continues to remain high this year well they actually might seem like they're making more and more profits when in reality they're not because it's just the inflation that's just brought up everything in general therefore it looks like the profits are higher when they're really not so for that reason guys this graph doesn't look too shabby it really doesn't the outlier is a little bit scary but it's in line with what they've been doing and it's perfectly understandable too so for that reason i'm going to give it an 80 percent for a grade for the net income looking now at the free cash flow the most important of all the profit metrics cash from operations less your capital expenditures guys this is what companies use to pay out the dividend buy back shares pay down debt make acquisitions and grow the company in general very very important for this thing to of course be positive and then to consistently be increasing as well now when it comes to this we got five years ago of 106.2 million dollars to one year ago of 293 million dollars that is an increase of 176 percent with a five-year average of 168.14 million dollars now looking further into this graph guys we can see that it's actually been fairly consistent from four years ago to one year ago so unfortunately it has not been consistent on the entirety of the five year right from five years ago to four years ago they did go down from 106.2 to 98.7 but aside from that guys it's been fairly consistent ever since and assuming that we get this year's numbers higher than that of last year's numbers this 106 will be pushed to the left and we would essentially get a perfect increasing line so assuming what their cash flow does this year will affect my future grades when it comes to this metric but overall i again have to give it like maybe an 85 because we do see a more of a consistent increase in that of the net income but we still have this small drop from five years ago to four years ago looking now at the revenue we got five years ago of 913.4 million dollars to one year ago of 1.3 billion dollars that is an increase of 41.73 percent and unfortunately i actually have to give this guys a low grade because well from five years ago to four years ago you can see that they were actually well essentially nowhere it, it was actually down if you think about it right from 913.4 to 901.3 two years ago so even though this one right here two years ago is understandable because of probably covid related numbers guys we have not seen any covid related numbers in the last two profit metrics so i don't necessarily know but then again it was essentially flat from five to two years ago and then spiked up last year probably because of pent-up demand so for that reason guys because it's not consistently increasing though it is positive i have to give this like a 70 percent looking at the balance sheet numbers and total assets and total liabilities if we subtract this this tells us whether or not the company's assets is able to essentially cover their liabilities th their debts and obviously we want this thing to be positive we do not want their liabilities to supersede their assets and currently they're at 353.6 million dollars and unfortunately throughout the whole entirety of the past five years they have been either flat but overall they've actually gone down which is a little bit concerning so that's not really that good they've reached their lowest one year ago of 313 million dollars take a look at the average assets we get around 725 million dollars average liabilities we get 352 million dollars and doing this difference we get 373 million dollars guys i actually have to give this like a 50 percent maybe even like a 45 percent as an overall grade just because it was flat but recently they have been coming down so Again, I don't necessarily know what is going. Obviously, this year's numbers could change the more time passes this year. But overall, right now, I have to give it a 45. Looking now at the cash flow minus liabilities, because again, cash flow is what companies use to pay down their debt. So we're going to do the exact same thing as the assets minus the liabilities. But now we're going to take the cash flow year over year and subtract that minus the liabilities. And we can see right here, guys, they're currently at negative, well, as of last year, they're at negative $175.3 million. And, well, 
you probably seeing this and you're like negative that's not good well most companies have it negative however what i like to look for is are they at least bringing this value closer and closer to zero are there is their cash flow increasing much more than their liabilities right and well it kind of is a little bit weird so they reached their lowest three years ago of negative 355.3 million dollars and then ever since they have been getting closer and closer to zero but if we take a look at five years ago they were only negative 40.7 million dollars and then from five to four years ago they went even higher to negative 34.7 million dollars so i'm actually gonna have to give this guys a pretty decent grade just because they are at least doing this kind of increasing their cash flow more than their liability but if you take a look at the ca average cash minus the average liabilities we get around negative 167 million dollars so i'm actually going to give this guys a 75 percent all right guys now let's come over here and analyze the shares outstanding a very underrated metric and well in this channel we look at it because it tells you essentially if the company is diluting you as the investor and also if the company pays out the dividend it also tells you if whether or not their pay ratio is going to increase in the future very very important guys for this thing to be coming down and not up you want a company to be buying back shares so we got five years ago 48.3 million shares to today guys of 49.2 million shares Unfortunately, on the five year, that is an increase of 1.86%. And from the previous year to the current year, they're also up a fifth of a percent. It's unfortunate because they're increasing it. And I would like to say, oh, it's just a tiny increase, probably because they figured that their share price was overvalued. And that could possibly be it. But take a look at this, guys. They have actually consistently increased it ever since five years ago, which is, again, not that good. And in fact, they've consistently increase it by around like by like 0.2 of a sh of shares every single year so it's actually consistently increasing which is not good at all overall guys i'm actually going to give this like a 50 percent again it is increasing it i would like it for them to be decreasing it and it's not like it was just like oh we're gonna increase just this one year because we have no idea what's gonna happen no they've been consistently increasing even from five years ago and now with the cash and equivalents, they currently have $250.1 million with an average cash of $229.58 million. So let's do a quick recap on the overall grades. We got the net income of 80%, free cash flow 85%, revenue 70%, Assets minus liabilities, 45%, cash flow minus liabilities, 75%, and the shares still standing at 50% for an overall grade, guys, of 71%. It's a pretty average company. Now, their profits do look amazing. But take a look at this. Assets minus liabilities, guys, even though it was positive, it looked like it was going down. So that's not good. Their shares of standing is also not that good, guys, right? They are increasing it. Not a lot, but they are consistently increasing. And that's the worrisome part. So that's essentially why I'm giving it a 71%. It is essentially average. And now let's come over here and make some assumptions. As always, low, medium, high using three different factors. Revenue growth, protected share buyback, and the required rate of return, which I like to keep flat at 10%. And right off the bat, guys, we can see that the baseline for a target share price, not just seen for debt, is $65.54. Guys, the current share price is $33.71. So we haven't even made any assumptions yet. This is already telling me that this might be a pretty decent buy already. So let's come over here to the growth tab in seeking alpha we can see that the revenue growth forward is expected at 16.21 and the revenue growth year over year is 20.24 so let's be conservative when it comes to these revenue growth assumptions and say that for the low assumptions guys that they might not be able to grow this at the same rate that the forward is essentially saying I'm going to take into account the fact that inflation is still raging on and well clothes is just one of those things that if people don't need it then they're not going to buy it right people would rather prioritize food instead of clothing or at least new clothing anyways so for the revenue growth i'm going to say about seven percent for the low assumption let's bring this up to ten percent for the median assumption and thirteen percent for the highest assumption now for the predicted share buyback we have seen through the shares of standing guys that they have been issuing shares at around one percent every single year they have not stopped and the probability of them stopping is not likely so let's say that for the low assumption that they actually make this a little bit worse right that they actually go to like a negative three percent or at least three percent of shares outstanding that they'll issue within the next four years so for that let's come over here and put negative three percent the negative just means that they're issuing shares let's come over here to the median assumption and let's put negative two percent and for the highest assumption, let's put negative 1%, basically in line with what they're currently doing. And guys, this gives me some target share prices now. 
not adjusting for debt of $81.25 for the low assumption, $90.78 for the median assumption, and $101.20 for the highest assumption. Now adjusting for debt, we take a look at the cash equivalents, we have the net debt, and obviously, if they have more debt than cash, then the value comes down, and if they have more cash and debt, then the value comes up. As you can see, it does come up by around $6 or so to $85.92 meaning assumption $95.50 and for the highest assumption it is almost $106. Now adding a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15%. For the low assumption this puts me between the buy ranges of $73 to $81.63. Meaning assumption it is $81.17 to $90.72 and for the highest assumption it is essentially $90 to $100.67. Guys the current share price is $33. Yeah, it's pretty much just telling me that if you believe my assumptions over here, if you believe that they'll grow at 10% in the next four years and that they'll issue shares at 2%, Guys, if you buy that at a 90 to a $95 range, you are going to get a required rate of return of 10% within the next four years, assuming these assumptions, right? And, you know, it really just shows that depending on what you believe the company will do, all of these numbers are going to change. That's why, as I always say in every single video, please have these calculators. It is not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. Please make your own assumptions and just do not rely off of mine because I could easily be wrong with this. Maybe you guys know something about this company that I don't. I've never shopped at this company before. I don't even know what their clothes will even look like. My whole investing prospect at first is to look at the numbers, look at their fundamentals and see if they make sense. Then if they do make sense, figure out which kind of price I would like to buy this company at. This is essentially what this is. And then once I get this kind of valuation and I see that, oh, it is a good price, like for example, right now, then I would actually go forth and do more research as to like, okay, how many stores are they opening up this year? What are their comparable store sales, etc., etc., etc. That's essentially my investing style. And I believe that that's the one that lowers the amount of risk the most. That's essentially what I'm trying to do, guys, is lower the amount of risk as much as possible. That's essentially why guys, again, please make your own assumptions when it comes to these companies. Have these calculators. I have this one, my book value one, and a re-evaluation one, and even a dividend tracking sheet for all of you guys to have. All I'm asking for in return guys is just help me grow my channel. I'm giving you guys free content, occasionally free live streams, and I'm giving you guys free calculators and a dividend tracking sheet. All I'm asking for in return is just something free in return like subscribe comment please help me grow my channel we are at as of i'm recording this video 861 subscribers that is nuts that is absolutely nuts i cannot believe that guys at all so i really do appreciate it i do have something planned for the 1000 subscriber special it is coming up i uh, you know we still have a little bit of ways to go but i do have something planned so if you guys want to see that please help me grow my channel like subscribe comment it really does help now let's actually analyze this dividend because at $1.40 per share with a 4% dividend yield, this actually might not be too good bad guys. And if you guys are seeing this already, you can tell that it's actually not too shabby. Looking at the monthly income, if you make the average US income, this is around $5,725. At the current share price, which according to my assumptions, it is a good price in all assumptions, even the margins of safety as well, this actually buys you 169.84 shares and the current annual dividends per share of $1.40. Look at this guys, $237.77 quarterly dividends of $59.44 and a monthly dividend of $19.81. That is massive. Normally, if if it's above 200, I I love it. I absolutely adore it. This is 237 annually, not 200. So think about that, guys. Let's actually do something interesting. Let's actually put this at like $2,000 and see how much this actually is in annual dividends for $2,000. And you can see it is $83.06. So again, not too shabby. It's not 100 bucks as I personally would like, but it is $83.06. And actually, let's do this a little bit further as we saw when it came to their 52 week low they were at 26 dollars and 50 cents and let's actually put the share price guys at 26 dollars and 50 cents and now scrolling down here we can see that well the annual dividends per two thousand dollars it is 105 dollars and 66 cents so if you would have bought this at the 52 week low you would have increased your net income 
yearly by $105.66. That is absolutely amazing, guys. And if we actually switch this now to $5,725, we can see that the annual dividend is $302.47. So yeah, guys, if you were to have bought this at $26.56, you would have been rolling in it right now. Overall, guys, when it comes to this company, I gotta say, it's average when it came when it comes to the fundamentals it's essentially average i wish that they weren't increasing their shares unfortunately they are their assets minus liabilities could be a little bit better but the profit metrics seem to be okay and when it comes to this dividend it looks to be good too and the fact that their payout ratios are 41 and 23 and a half percent guys this actually might not be a bad company to buy right now i mean even the target share price is telling me that it should be a lot higher and yet we're at 33 dollars so Again, not financial advice, make your own assumptions, but from my assumptions, it's telling me that's a pretty good buy. That pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites, link in the description below. So with that said, peace out and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis of video.